In April 1944, Eli Stern and his family were rounded up by the Nazis from their home in Stromterra, Romania, and placed into a ghetto called Dragomarest. He was 13 years old. After living there for approximately three weeks, in May of 1944, the Nazis came and announced that all the residents of the ghetto would be taken away and resettled. We're in the ghetto called Dragomarest. Uh, we're gathering there from all the towns around that, around the ghetto. We are crowded in about 50 to 60 people in each house. And the following morning, they make an announcement. People, male, males from 12 years to 60, should report to a certain place, and everybody went to do forced labor. Uh, every morning, people went to work. Like I said, 12 people from 12 to 60 years old went to work every morning. Whether the work was needed or not was, didn't matter, but they gave them picks and shovels, and they made them do forced labor. As we were walking to the, to the railroad station, children started to get lost from their parents. Parents were frantic looking for the kids, and the kids looking for their children, for their parents. We saw from a distance a long line of a freight train with cattle cars standing there. We approached that train, and there was no mercy. They filled up 100 to 120 people per car. It was, we arrived to a place, people, again, the people looked out through the slats of the, the walls of the, uh, of the train, of the car, and they said, this name is called, there's a name called Krakow. Most of us never heard of it, that city. Some of us did, and they said, oh my God, we're in Poland. They barked orders, get out, get out fast, leave your belongings, you're not going to need them. There were, the, the SS had German shepherds with them, the dogs were barking, the children were crying, it was total chaos. The men were separated. The women and the children were asked to, to walk. A group of prisoners with striped, striped prisoner clothes, they would say to us, you dumb Hungarians, why did you come now? They were rolling their eyes in disbelief that we came now, as if we had a choice. We said, where are we? You dumb Hungarians, don't you know where you are? Look at the chimneys. We didn't know what a chimney, what is he talking about chimneys? They're taking us into a, a building. They're, sh they're shaving our hair, all the hair, body hair, hair, hair whatever hair, all, they shaved our hair. They gave us the same prisoner clothes that we saw a few hours before that, that those people had, they made us wear those clothes, and they assigned us to barracks. Somebody came and, and gave another order in the barrack. Uh, all children under 18 years old, you can stay in the barracks, but you separate from the adults. You stay in this corner, the adults stay in the other corner. We did not know what that meant. The adults, my father, didn't know what it meant. At this point, our, our mothers and siblings must have been in the gas chambers or in the crematorium already, but none of us knew it. We were, we were, we still, we were in the ovens and we didn't know where we were. When daybreak in the morning, 
we spoke, we come out and we speak to other prisoners and we ask questions and all they say is, you dummies, look, you see that, you see those sparks, you see that smoke? That's where your parents are, that's where your siblings are. Luckily, uh, about a week or 10 days after we, uh, we, were, we came into Auschwitz, we were put on a transport. Again, not knowing where we were going, my father was with me at the time, and most of the people from my town were with me, and uh, we were on the way. We found out we were going to a place called Bochenwald. They, uh, about a week or so later, they sent us to another, another transport, a place called Dora. And, uh, and Dora, my father stayed behind in Buchenwald. I went to Dora with a lot of other people from my town. From Dora, they sent me to Bergen-Belsen. And Bergen-Belsen, I, I was liberated uh, April 15, 1945. And uh, when I separated from my father in Buchenwald, the next time I, my father was liberated as well, but the next time I saw him was 1951, seven years later.